He has 20 of them himself. Johnson coming off a one for nine outing at FIU last weekend. A game the Hatters lost by seven. So extremely key to get him going early and often this afternoon. Mohamedou Jawara wins the opening tip for the Stetson Hatters in white. And we are underway. Hatters and Bobcats from the Edmonds Center. Jawara back and down Ben Vanderplas. And it's the veteran for Ohio who wins that battle. Both teams like to play man-to-man, -man, switch a lot. You can see that the Hatters in a bigger lineup this afternoon because of those two power forwards for the Bobcats. Vander Plass backing down Josh Smith. Pass was tipped. Now Carter, the other big for the Bobcats. It's Jason Carter off the window with the first two of the game. Just as we talked about at the top of the telecast, those two guys, those bookend forwards, if they sense a little weakness in your defense, they're going to take advantage of it. You mentioned the change for Stetson. Josh Smith in the starting lineup. Number 12 in white, replacing Stefan Swenson, who started every game this year. He's a six foot one point guard. Hatters going with another big to counter Vanderplas and Carter. There's Rob Perry sinking his first two. Mid range jumper for the Hatters' leading scorer. Preseason all conference pick in his junior year out of Oak Ridge in Orlando. And it's going to be big if he plays well. We've been looking for him to put together two. Good halves of basketball. He really struggled in that FIU game. Just five points on two of 12 shooting. His field goal percentages at career lows to start the year. Here's Sears, the point guard. They get it to Miles Brown. He's their sharpshooter from long range. And then it can't be rescued. Sears racing after it, but it'll go Stetson's way. There is Jeff Bowles now in his third year. Five wins away from 100 between Ohio and Stony Brook, where he was the head coach for three seasons before taking over at his alma mater in 2019. He was a captain on the Ohio basketball team in the mid-90s. Perry open for three. Off the back iron, and Vanderplas packs the rebound. Down to Ben Roderick for Ohio. The Bobcats run only when they have opportunities to, but this is what they like to do best. Power forwards grind it out inside. Hatters. Settling for less than ideal shots, the Bobcats on that end. Yeah, I, I did, thinking the Hatters are going to go double team once they get the ball in the post, but it, they played straight up defense right there. Smith down low to Jawara. One on one with Vanderplas, the left hook off the glass and in. I've been calling for it for two years, and Mr. Jawara has been listening to me. Been in the gym, turning over that right shoulder. Well, Jawara got sort of a wake-up call earlier this year when Donnie Jones relegated him to minor minutes off the bench. He was playing single-digit minutes for a few games there right at the start of the season. He's made his way back into the starting lineup. He gets the rebound here coming off a 12-7 and game at FIU last week. Well, nothing wakes up a player more than seeing your minutes decrease. So you want to be out there and you want to play and you want to correct whatever it is that you're doing wrong. Drives on Vanderplas, loses the ball. It'll stay with the Hatters with 12 to shoot. A lot of contact. Vanderplas felt he got fouled the trip up the floor just earlier. And there's Jawara taking it strong to the basket. Donnie Jones in his third year as the Hatters head coach. Won 100 games in six seasons at UCF. And also a two-time national champion on Billy Donovan's staff at Florida in the mid-2000s. Those fabulous teams, Joaquin Noah, Al Horford, and won back-to-back -back national titles. They get it into Jawara, now Johnston. He's got the big man Carter on him. Christian Jones, the fifth-year senior, fadeaway J off tough, the tough shot. front of the rim. Yeah, not a great look, was it? And now Brown leading it the other way for Ohio. Miles Brown underneath to Carter lays it in. Carter was able to get an easy bucket there, being spoon-fed by the drive dish. So that opens up the floor when you have a guy that can penetrate and get inside your defense. 
Johnston for Stetson. Sears is with him. Johnston, little runner, no good. Vanderplas with the board. Vanderplas, long outlet, picked off by Jawara. He saves it, and it's off Carter. It'll go Stetson's way. Great hustle play by the big man, Mohamedou Jawara. Just a bank bang play there as they're trying to push the ball up. Vanderplas, and there's Jawara being alert and able to try to get it back in bounds. Christian Jones there. Out of bounds on the Bobcats. A scrappy start to this game. Both teams with multiple turnovers in this Fighting for the basketball. You got Josh Smith. You got Jawara inside. Extra. Those are those extra possessions. Sears blocked. Ooh, good block there by, <laughs> by Rob Perry. He came flying in to knock that away from Sears. Now the three for Perry on the other end is no good. Gets his own miss and goes to the ground. They'll call a travel on him. And it'll go the other way. Nobody knows where your shot is going to go when you miss it, but yourself, the shooter. He grabbed it, but fell over a defender. Here's the block there by Perry on the defensive end. Takes us to a timeout on the floor. A lot of hustle on both sides early on. Hatters with a two-point edge after five minutes. Been kind of a scrappy opening few exchanges hasn't it Greg? everybody's trying to find themselves they're trying to find a rhythm and we talked about ohio the bobcats being a very deliberate basketball team they try to impose their will their style so the headers are up to the challenge early on is mark sears a sophomore point guard handling for ohio ben roderick Three-point shooting wing misses though. He's had a tough start to the year yes. shooting 17% on threes coming in Last year he shot 40% just has not fallen at all for Roderick so far in his junior season Here's well, a three-point ace and chase Johnston, you know Unlike that next level of play, you know when you're playing every other night you have a chance to get those percentages up it Seems like in college when you start off bad it, it, it snowballs Brown the other way. Too strong with a layup and then the putback over the top by Roderick and then bounced out off of Ohio. Alex Crawford has gotten into the game for Stetson. We've barely seen him this season. But he's an early sub for Donnie Jones along with Wes Panzo, who also played very limited minutes last weekend. You know, he just has that myth, you know, to be able to play two positions. There's Chase Johnson getting it going from downtown his first triple of the night And we talk about Chase being able to shoot the basketball. That's what the Hatters need him to do That's his job. He has the green light to put it up anywhere inside the building First made three of the game for either team. Ohio makes ten a game. They lead the Mac There's Carter with a turnaround jump shot. He's got all six for the Bobcats Yeah, you can't just let him operate like that now. Here's a guy again over 1100 points in his career So he understands how to play and if you're just gonna let him play one-on-one -on -one in the post That's not a good that's, that's not good for the Hatters Johnston misses a contested three This may be a heat check there by Johnston now Roderick nails it from the corner Big reaction from the Ohio bench for that one. They know how important it is to get Ben Roderick going. And he's probably thinking what you just said. Last year, I know I can. I shot 47%. I'm the same player. I just got to get it to go down. Johnson baseline cut, but he had no look. Now Crawford along three. That's off the back iron. Hanzo looking for the offensive rebound, but he dropped it right into the hands of Sears. Sears averages about four rebounds, so he's a tough competitor. And that's what he likes to do get inside the paint and score Averaging nearly 17 a game a breakout season for Sears Who was the backup to Jason Preston? 
who was drafted right at the start of the second round by the Clippers. Perry, that's a two. Mr. Perry's closing in on that thousand point mark there for his career. He's now 15 points away. Very possible he gets to that today. Keep an eye on it as we go. Yep. He plays like that. It's a different ball club. Vander Plas posting up Smith. Little yeah. hook goes. Just pure power there. Backing him into the low post. BVP. <laughs> Mr. Ben Vander Plas. And Jason Carter, both of those guys, I'm talking about, they're not little guys now. They're 6'8", 230, 225, so they know what they're doing. You may have to run a double at them, at least make them think about it a little more. Johnston from about 30 feet misses. Trying to get Roderick to step into that one, but the Hatter's covered, so it's Sears instead. He's shooting nearly 50% from downtown this year. And all of that is precedented by that last bucket where he got inside the lane. Everyone is trying to stop him from driving. He saw the bucket go through. Now he comes down. He's feeling good about himself. Pulls up on a break. Knocks it down. Perry. He'll try his luck from downtown. That's in and out. Stetson one of eight from three-point range. And that poor three-point shooting has been a consistent problem for them in this two and five start. Last year, they were at 37% as a team. This year, under 31. Really struggled to get the long ball to go. Vanderplas lost his footing and dribbles it out of bounds. That'll bring us to a timeout on the floor. Ohio starting to get going, though. On a 12-2 run, and it's Mark Sears. Starting to take over, distributing, and scoring for the future. Jason Preston leaves school a year early to go to the NBA and Sears opens up the season a home game against Belmont that they were expected to lose. Belmont is a borderline top 50 team in the country. He goes off for 27 points and they beat them by 12. And he has not slowed down since. He's been in double digits in every game that Ohio has played this year. And coming off 24 points in that win against St. Francis of Pennsylvania just a few days ago. So they're coming out in a little one, two, two, four court, three quarter court press. Change things up during a timeout. The Hatters handle it well. Hatters really mixing up their rotations today. Keith Lamar has come into the game. He's seldom used sophomore from Stockbridge, Georgia. Now Jones. Big shot there. Yeah, the grad student from Columbia, South Carolina. He is a regular in this rotation. Started the game. He knocks down the triple. And when he plays well early throughout his career, he ends up having a pretty good game. So well, let's see if Christian can get it going here this afternoon. That would be a welcome addition to the Hatters. It's just Rob Perry and Chase Johnson. You need that third person. Sears got that open three for A.J. Clayton, but Clayton seemed a little surprised <laughs> when it came to him. It bounces out for a turnover. And so with, with this team in, especially Schmock, and then you see Owens, they like to press. This is the team they like to kind of push the pace a little. I.J. Izuma's in the game for Ohio, Sam Towns. They only played with eight against St. Francis. They've gone to nine here, and now Aubin Gatterizzi, freshman from Belgium for Stetson, loses the ball out of bounds on the other end. That pass had a little mustard on it, but uh, catchable pass. Those are those unforced errors you cannot have when you're trying to beat a very good quality basketball team. So Schmack will run the point on this possession. Grad transfer from Division II Findlay. There is Clayton making amends and knocking down a three. He's a true freshman. Perry the other way. And Kazuma got a piece of that one. Now it's Towns running the floor. Sears steps into a three. In and out. And the rebound falls off of Ohio. Izuma touched it last. Well, Clayton, the freshman there from Duncan Falls, Ohio, that's his job. That He comes in, he's a very good standing shooter, kind of an understudy for Vanderplas and, and, of course, Jason Carter. But he can hit, that's the M.O. on him. He can very good standing catch-and-shoot player. Had his first 
multi-three game earlier this year at Rupp Arena against Kentucky. Game where Ohio was very competitive before fading late. No to Bobcats. A lot of inside pushing and shoving there, and so they're going to get Izuma. And that's the game's first foul for either Believe team. Believe it or not. Well, these are two of the teams that are in the top ten in the country in fewest fouls. Stetson has committed the fewest fouls of any team in Division I college basketball. Now, you can and Ohio is ninth. You can, now, you can take that how you want it. Now, is, it <laughs> or is it position defense? Or is it not a lot of defense? I think it's the earlier, you know, it's, it's position defense. Well, two quick fouls here. It's an offensive foul on Gattarizzi. He'll send the ball the other way. Yeah, Gattarizzi kind of reaching out with the left arm. And not a lot of contact compared to what we've seen earlier, but... Officials felt he got an advantage. Clayton pops it quickly, drills it. Good time out here. Donnie Jones needs to talk things over. A.J. Clayton. Yep. Four-star recruit from Duncan Falls, Ohio. Knocking down a cup center, and it sounds like it was a real cracker of a game. Ohio won it 98-95. A lot of scoring going on. That was the fifth season of basketball played in this building. That coming was, up on its 50th anniversary in 2024. And that was prior to the shot clock. So, a lot of offensive basketball taking place. Stephon Swenson running the show for the Hatters as they look to get back into this one. Back-to-back -back threes from A.J. Clayton giving Ohio this lead. Now Swenson, offensive foul as he put the elbow into Schmack. As you can see, this team for Ohio, when these guys come in, look at the help side defense and everybody's in the lane. Three, four Bobcats in the lane. Schmock drawing the offensive foul. This this team ratchets it up, the defense. And um, and they also push the pace a little more. Tazos Cook comes into the game for Swenson. Cook, freshman out of Westerville, Ohio. Keep, keep an eye on Chase. Like he bumped knees on that last uh, series. He's kind of moving around gingerly. And that right knee, he has a sleeve on it. So that's the knee he was grabbing. The Hatters are now in a zone defense to see if they can do something. Towns misses badly, but the putback for Azuma. Yeah, Azuma's just out hustled everyone for that offensive rebound. This is his third appearance, true freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. He was a high school teammate of Mark Sears's, though, at Hargrave Military Academy. And a fruitful recruiting ground for Jeff Bowles. Perry had to switch to a pass late, and then Azuma is called for the foul on Jawara. Yeah, Perry took the ball on a handoff, and, you know, everyone thought he was going up for the shot. And, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, he did, but the shot was blocked and looked as if it was a pass to Jawara. Izuma did not see what was going on, but. Hey, you're absolutely right, Greg. That was a shot that got blocked straight to Jawara. Mm -hmm. Izuma has to come out with two fouls. Carter is back in. And uh, Izuma got his time's worth. <laughs> He's very physical inside, bringing that presence for the Bobcats. Time here for Perry. Goes to Cook. Baseline drive. Look at the explosiveness of Cook, but he doesn't finish. Got to make that. Got to make that nice drive. Went to the opposite side of the basket. Cook gets a hand in on that handoff from Brown, but Brown somehow gets it back from Jawara. Well, Miles Brown, I mean, Jawara had a good hustle play, but Miles Brown came up with a better hustle play. Right now, those 50-50 balls are going to the Bobcat. Starters getting ready to check back in for Ohio. Here is Carter trapped, but he gets it to it. Schmack in and out. Part of the offensive rebound. Everybody's unbalanced. You've got to find someone. Perry gets a hand on it. Carter throws it right to Johnston. I've been better off letting that go out of play. And then a foul by Schmack as they cross the timeline. Yeah, Chase is not moving well for the Hatters, number 11. And 
looks like he's still having some remnants of a couple of series ago where he banged knees with you know, one of the Bobcat players. You see him look at it, looking at it right there. Johnston, the reigning A Sun freshman of the year, he broke the school record for three pointers made in a season. I would not be surprised if he breaks that record himself three more <laughs> times over the course of his career. Well, he has the green light to shoot the basketball. A lot of contact going on in the post play there. The officials are kind of letting them play, but you can't, you know, let a defender root a player out of their position there with the lower body, and that's what happened there. While he was receiving the basketball, he was kind of rooted out on this lower level, and that's what made him lose control of the basketball. So. Right there, they are letting him play. Just five total fouls called. All in the last three minutes. And this, that would be for the advantage of the Bobcats. Roderick misses the triple. Smith comes up with the rebound. Again, that's a shot that he would make more often than not last season that has just not gone down for him this year. Rob should have turned the corner there. Hang and out. So does Smith. <laughs> Frustration dunk there by Mr. Josh Smith. He can get up there, yes, just rocks can. the rim. Yes, he can. Let's take a look at it, that nice hold off bang out. <laughs> Mr. Josh Smith. He appreciates that too. He was six foot two when he was 16, but he grew six inches his last two years of high school, now listed at six foot eight. And put on about 15 pounds yeah. from last year. And credit Weza Panzo for having the guts to make that pass. A lot of times, guys, they don't want to make that pass from the top. He made a nice bounce pass. Josh held off the defender. Johnston staying tight to Sears. Carter, three, off the front iron, and Smith goes up for the board. And that's what I like to see Josh Smith do even more of, and that's what he's doing more this year, rebounding the basketball. Got to look for him, too, inside. Perry pulls back for three off the back iron. Perry cold from deep, 0 for 4. He was 0 for 5 last weekend at FIU. This has not been the start to the year that Perry has imagined after such a strong sophomore campaign last year. Well, this zone has kind of held the Bobcats somewhat in check. Roderick again missing from the corner. You know, the last three or four trips, they've been unable to solve the riddle of how to get inside of it or how to penetrate it. So they've been settling for jump shots and it's working to perfection for the Hatter. Stetson's got to figure out how to score themselves. Here's Panzo. Steps into a three. No Tell sooner him. than you said. There it is. Well, he can knock down that open three. Just he under 40% for his career. Gets his feet together. Nobody beats the Wes. <laughs> As a Panzo in his third year with the program, one of the first recruits for Donnie Jones in that inaugural season. Now Sears missing in the mid-range, and Panzo snares the board. I think, I think Donnie Jones has something here with this zone. Cook lays it oh. off for Smith, and he dropped it. Would have had an easy two, but he couldn't hang on to the basketball, and Ohio will have it when we come back. Hatter showing some light, though. A little 5 0 spurt for Gets Stetson. The there he is, Mr. Wes. Wes up. Check it out at Stetson Broadcast Productions. Jeff Bowles trying to figure out how to get his offense going. Ohio scoreless over the last four minutes and change since Stetson has switched to his zone. That zone has caused havoc for the Bobcats and it's played right into the Hatter's hand as the Hatter's come up with a full court press here, man to man, and they drop back into that zone. And it's because they've settled for jump shots. And ordinarily, you know, you would have Sears penetrating, but. And there's the penetration. <laughs> it's for Miles Brown this time, his first two, the junior out of Rochester, New York. I mean, you play right into a zone, in right what a zone defense wants you to do when you, you know, when you just jack up shots and you're not making them. You were talking about your Syracuse Redman a little earlier, and, and that zone causes a lot of problems for teams because it looks as if it's so open. You jack up shots, 
And next thing you know, man, they're down and they're scoring two or three times. A tough one for my orange today, losing to Georgetown. Hanzo into the shot clock, off the iron. Smith, though, with the offensive rebound. Now Valdez sees the lane wide open, misses the two, and Vanderplas gets the rebound for Ohio. Got to make that. Got to make that shot. Carter bumps into Cook, offensive foul. Well, that's a tough call there, and good hustle to get back by Cook. And the officials right on it. And as you take a look at Carter. Wow, that's a tough one. He was outside of the restricted area as well, and his body was in front of Carter. Yeah, people get hung up on the feet, but if you're squared up, that's a charge. I think the officials got that one right, mind yeah. you. Yep, the trailing official didn't even look or take a second look. Jones, loose hand, Sears comes away with it. Sears is leading the Mac in steals per game. Not just an offensive weapon. He can weapon. shoot it out there, BVP. He gets oh. fouled on a three by Valdez. That is Valdez. He certainly can shoot it. 43% for the year. And Valdez a little bit too eager to close out on him. I mean, you see this a lot. He did not give the shooter a chance to come down. You see this in the NBA, I mean, a, a lot. I mean, this is something that even college basketball is a point of emphasis making sure the shooter has room to come down. As we take a look at the redshirt senior from Ripon, Wisconsin. He is a second generation D1 player. His father, Dean, played at Wisconsin Green Bay. Uh -huh. Went to the NCAA tournament in 1991 and Ben followed in his father's footsteps. With Ohio going back to the NCAA's last year. It was their first time in the tournament in nine years. Interesting though that they've made the tournament three times since 2010 and they've won their first round game on every occasion as a double digit seed but can't get out of that second round well they did last get to the sweet 16 in 2012 yeah, a couple of years ago a few years ago as a, as a 13 last year losing to Creighton yes uh, after stunning Tony Bennett's Virginia who were technically the defending national champions yes, there was yes. no tournament in 2020 right. This is a 10-point game here. These two minutes, you want something positive, and you want something just like that. Now, it felt like the Hatters had to have that bucket. Christian Jones comes up with it for Stetson. Now Sears gets into a good spot. Brown. Hatters recover. Vanderplas thought about it again. Now Sears for three. Misses the wide-open triple, and Panzo grabs the rebound. A lot of contact going on, but you got to be able to take that contact. And Weser coming up with the rebound. Officials letting them play this afternoon. Cook, three. Hanzo gets the offensive board. That's a three of 14 from long range. They're taking more than half their shots from three. And as has been the case for the majority of the year, they have struggled to knock them down. And now an offensive foul on Christian oh. Jones as he just went in the Hatters, fumbling into the lane. Yeah, the Hatters got an extra possession here. And Rob Perry thought about pulling the trigger. He did not. He brought it back out. He gave it to Christian Jones. And Christian got by one defender, but nowhere to go there. That's a, that's a tough call on him. That's where you want to get past that first defender. Pull up with a nice medium-range jump shot, which he can make. Making sure that the floor is cleaned up because it is very warm here in D-Land, Florida. Yeah, it is <laughs> unseasonably warm. Yes. High temperature in the 80s today. We're typically down around 70 this time of year. But it is uh, it is toasty, almost uh, take, May or October-esque. Take a look at, at the crowds there, everybody. Look at that short hands, short you know, polos on, and uh, that's uh, December in Florida. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. <laughs> Warm all over the country today. A big heat wave going through the Midwest. Well, this is going to be a pivotal 40-plus seconds here left. And uh, the Hatters is 
<laughs> come away with a, it's a turnover there by the Bobcats. It looks like Gatorizzi got his got his hand in there, but six so turnovers here in this first half for Ohio. They average ten and a half a game, so and, uh, that's an, uh, may, causing some problems for them on that end. Yeah, it looked as if it was a full court press, but just full court man to man. Got to be strong with the basketball here and get something out of it. Shot clock is off. Donnie Jones signaling to Tassos Cook to wind it down. Got to go gotta right now. Going. Yep, five seconds. Go. Cook taking it on Sears. Gets it up. In and out. Everything but the finish for Cook, who made a great move to get Sears off his back. But he can't come up with the shot. And Ohio will go into the break up by eight. Scrappy first half between these two mid-major teams. We'll break it all down when we come back. Ohio 29 steps in 21 on a Saturday afternoon in Central. They, they host Marshall, Donnie Jones' former school, and then USC Upstate before Christmas, and then they go right into the 20-game max schedule before New Year's against Eastern Michigan. A lot of conferences doing that, you know, getting that one or two games in before the year ends. Mac was only 14 games last year due to the pandemic. 20 games in this upcoming season. Vanderplas in and out with a deep three to start things off. Uh, BVP has been wanting that to go down. You see he's been looking for that shot all game long. Redshirt senior. Ripping Wisconsin. About an hour and a half north of Milwaukee off I-41. I am certain he is a Green Bay Packers fan. <laughs> For his father played college ball. Go Pack Go. Big game against the Bears on Sunday night. And he's going to stay with Stetson as Sears couldn't haul it in in time. And, you know, Rob Perry has a little advantage in the height. But trying to get that shot off. And a little loose with the basketball. Sears has those quick hands. Five seconds on the shot clock. And they won't get a shot as they turn it over on the inbounds pass. Yeah, very lazy, lackadaisical pass inbounds there by the Hatters. Vanderplas posting up Josh Smith. Gets around the left, but not a great look. Good defense there by Smith. Now Jones, transition three. That's nice. good. Nice push by the Hatters. Had the numbers, and that started with the rebound and the outlet pass. Miles Brown, double move on Johnston, and he'll go to the line as Jawara comes in with the clumsy challenge at the end there. Yeah, and that's what you hate to see as a team and as a coach. I mean, you know, none of those fouls or those little contact like this occurred during the first half, but now you're, and now you're calling it, so. Not in the act of shooting. It was a pass off, so. Roderick. He continues to struggle with that three, one out of five. Well, Roderick says, I'm going to get that 17% shooting percentage up against the Hatters. <laughs> to be fair to him, even at one out of five, it's gone up slightly. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he's put up a lot of, yeah, I mean, like you say, five shots. And he's not shy about it. Terry, extra pass to Smith, but Carter's there on him. Six to shoot. They circulate around the perimeter. Jones got to step into it off the rim and a rebound by Vanderplas. Long range shot that extra pass by the Hatters may have cost him a possession. I thought Rob Perry had an open three, but he made that extra pass to Josh Smith. And he didn't get anything out of it. Carter looking to drive on Jawara. Ohio still has not scored a point here to start the second half. They have not been themselves offensively for most of the day. I mean, the Hatters have elected not to double-team the big bookend power forwards of Carter and Van Plus, and it's paid off for them. Jawara gets it up and in. And he probably got fouled two or three times there by, <laughs> by Miles Brown, but showing you that strength. Thought he might have erred when he brought the ball down, but he's I so he strong, is. he just yes, went he straight back up. Yes, he is. Good point, Evan. You're a big guy. You catch it. You, wanna, you do not want to bring it down. Unless you're making a move. And there's a sloppy foul by Jones as he clatters into Jason Carter. That's the second on Christian Jones. Two guys 
played a lot of basketball. Jason Carter, Christian Jones. Yeah, Carter, an interesting case. He played his first two years at Ohio yep. and then left to go to Xavier. But with his fifth-year pandemic eligibility, he decided to Come finish back. things off at Ohio. I wonder if with the transfer portal, we might see some more of that, of guys oh, yes. going somewhere for a year or two and then coming back to their first yeah. school, which you almost never saw. No, exactly. And now it's college basketball or college sports, the agency at its best. Johnston oh, off the contact. side of the backboard, but yeah, again, yeah. no call. No call. Ohio, no points yet in this second half. Carter blocking foul on Jawara, and Carter will go to the line. That's two quick fouls on Mo here to start the second half. But Carter and Vanderplus, they both put the ball on the floor, and there's a Euro step, if you will. You know, just trying to make the defender, you move with your body one way, you take that long step the opposite way, and, and Carter is a guy that can put it on the floor. He, he, he grabbed the rebound, brought it up the length of the floor, and Vanderplas can do the same. That's a luxury for a coach. Carter in his sophomore year at Ohio averaged 16 and a half points, seven rebounds a game to lead the team in both categories, took a shot on himself going to the Big East. He didn't get on the floor a whole lot for Xavier. It wasn't really a focal point for them. But he comes back to Ohio and is fit right back in. It's like he never left. And he's leading this team in rebounding. That's a nice shot there by Raw Perry. You don't see that a mid range. Yes, catch it in that mid post. And that was almost like a Jack Sigma move. You know, he kind of that reverse pivot and just the defender did not react. You're going to have to right explain over. that one to our younger viewers. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I love when you go deep into the bag for the reference, oh, though. I that old say. Seattle supersonic Jack Sigma. You Google it. Google him, Jack Sigma. Sears mid-range, too. That's good. Yeah, we have two guys who know what to do when they get the ball in scoring areas. Sears with seven. You got to get it to him. You got to get it to him inside. Oh, what a pass. Wow. But it's knocked out of the hands of Smith. I don't know how he wasn't fouled. And it's picked up by Sears. Because everyone heard the snap, and you and I heard it. Numbers here for Ohio. Brown misses the triple. Popped back up. And saved by the Bobcats. Boy, I'll tell you what the officials are letting him play basketball this afternoon. Brown, now he'll get a foul called on Smith. And that's, again, that's what you hate. You know, no calls, but now all of a sudden a touch foul. Smith having words <laughs> with the official, Kenneth Totten. That'll take us to a timeout on the floor. Ohio, bit of a slow start here in this second half, but they're getting their group back. They lead the Hatters by five. Probably has forgotten more basketball than most people know. But just the, one of the great strategists in basketball. And uh, Donnie Jones, I know, I mean, he was a very welcome addition uh, with the Hatters. Spent some time on Donnie Jones' staff at UCF. As Miles Brown knocks down the first of two. Almost 30 years in the NBA. Stops in Atlanta, Detroit with the Nets. Toronto, the Magic. And then lastly with the New York Knicks in the mid-2000s. Brown two out of two, and the Ohio lead out to seven. And this game is even in just about everywhere that you can see on the stat sheet with the exception of the score and the free throw line. That's been the difference in this basketball game. Quite literally, uh, seven out of seven, Ohio. Hatters have yet to take a free throw, and it's a seven-point game. Exactly. So... I'd like to see the basketball go inside just a little more. Doesn't look like it's going to happen on this possession. Cook at least gets a floater up. It hit the rim, but rebound down to Sears. They'll go quick. Roderick blocked by Perry. Very good defensive play by Rob Perry. Did not give up. Back on defense by himself. One of the few breaks that the Bobcats pushed the ball out. And there it is. Nice block there by Rob Perry. In. Perry had one block in the first seven games this year. He's got two this afternoon. Ben Roderick just can't seem to get things going here this afternoon. Well, it has been a brutal start to the year for Roderick, who was so good last season as part of that MAC championship run for Ohio. Carter, quarter three. Hop straight off, and Gattarizzi rebound knocked out. That's last touch by Sears. Yes, so that's his way. The youth of Gattarizzi, you got to grab that and keep it chin high. Some coaches say 
chin high. You know, you have the basketball very strong. You gotta know guards are coming around for it. So you hear the Bobcats made field goals and dead ball situations. They're in that two one two full court press, but it's really and they fall back into their man to man. And just taking some time off the clock. Here is Perry. Been great on defense, looking to get his offense going, but that's no good. He's now 0 for his last 10 over his last two games from three-point range. Sears weaving his way through. Finds Brown. Back to Sears. Drives on Perry. Another mid-range jumper. That's too strong. And Sears again. He wants to take the ball to the basket. The Hatters are doing a very good job of keeping him out of the paint. Cross-court feed to Panzo. And a foul away from the play against Ohio. It's going to go against Sears, his first. And the first team foul on Ohio here in the second half. Carter and Brown will check out. A.J. Clayton, Tommy Schmack coming back into the game for Ohio. Cooks inbound, picked off. Clayton. And the Hatters here, double figures in turnover. And they've been just some lazy pass. Unforced errors is what I call them. And uh, that was just a bad play there by. Few of them off inbound. Yes, yes, by Cook. Just a lazy pass. You know, you're trying to throw a ball in a guy 6'8, you got to get it over him. Roderick, nice. offensive foul. Gatarizzi draws the charge. Nice position defense by Gatarizzi. And Roderick is still just searching for anything. And, in college basketball, you just can't dribble the ball 20 feet out and expect to go with no one rotating to you. So you have to be able to pull up, knock down that shot, or make a pass. Roderick should know that, a more veteran performer, junior. Harry across the timeline, break the press to Panzo. Now here's the squad in for the Bobcats that likes to press and push the pace a bit. You have Schmock, you have... Taylor, you have, I mean, Clayton. So you have those guys that really like to push the pace. Yeah, Towns is in. Owens. Yeah. Smith, corner triple. That'll be a shot clock violation. I'm sorry, you're correct. Yeah, Towns. I mean, these are the guys that they like to press and they like to push the pace a bit. Not a good possession offensively for the Hatters. Now Towns a three. One and done again for Ohio, as well as Stetson's played on defense. They should probably have the lead by now, but they just haven't been able to score. That one tip gets back to Smith, though. Somehow keeps a hold of it. Off the glass, no good. And then the rebound gets tied up. Gattarizzi wins his team another possession as the arrows point in the Hatter's way. A couple of hustle plays on that shift for Alvin yeah. Gattarizzi as he comes out. Kind of a bang-bang play there with Josh Smith receiving the basketball, almost being tripped up, and he was off balance, so he had to just get it up, and uh, the ball just rolled off. Didn't have enough English on it, and good hustle there by Towns and Gattarizzi. Hatters keep a hold of the inbound this time. Here's but it, Perry. But if you're the Hatters, I mean, this is where you want to be with the ball club like this. You're hanging around. You're right there. Swiped away by Sears, but it stays with Stetson. Jones open for three. Off the back iron. Rushed it just a bit. The shot clock was winding down, but it wasn't at one, two seconds. You had a chance to make a nice shot there. Neither team has scored in the last three and a half minutes. Towns. There you go. And I thought Rob Perry would have tried to draw the charge there, but Towns, long, lengthy performer there, 6'9", 190 pounds out of Columbus, Ohio. Nice drive to the basket. Hatters need a bucket here. He just can't seem to get the ball inside at all. Yeah, the times when Jawara inside is open, Look at Swenson dancing through the lane, but he can't finish it. Jawara goes to the floor to get the offensive board, but it never touched the rim. It's a shot clock violation. Hatters think that shot clock should have been reset. 
Yeah, Swenson shot. I don't think it touched the rim. It hit the backboard. And It'll be Ohio ball when we come back. Officials may take a look at it, but I don't think so. Ohio two for 12 from the floor here in the second half. Hatter's not much better, three for 12. Neither team getting a whole lot going on the offensive end. Ohio though, staked out a nine point lead, mostly due to hitting seven of seven free throws. Hatters have yet to take one. It's incumbent upon the Hatters to try to get something going inside. Jawara has had good position at times, but teammates have seemed to have just looked the other way you got to get it into him especially when he's in scoring position is mark sears the starting point guard for ohio swenson got a foot on that and we'll get 20 seconds back of the shot clock for the bobcats for ohio it's sears schmock towns clayton and ben vanderplas is back in for stetson it's swenson johnston Jones, Panzo, and Jawara. And you watch uh, the Bobcats. They're looking to run a set play. One of the few times they've had to, to do that. And nearly comes off, but Sears drops the entry pass for Vanderplas. Yeah, Vanderplas was looking at that shuffle cut. Some would call it a UCLA cut right off of the top high post. And trying to sneak a pass in there, but turnover. How can the Hatters get a bucket? They're trying to buy one. Yeah, especially, half. especially now that Rob Perry's not in the game. Jawara. Oh, he missed the bunny. Gets it back. Misses again. He'll get a third chance. Goes up strong. He gets fouled. And this will be the first free throw of the day for the Hatters and a frustrated Jawara. And that's what and that's what Coach Jones is saying. Man, dunk that. And he's strong enough to do it, but the persistence can pay off. You take a look at it. Not one time. There's a pump fake. He misses it. Second miss. Third miss. Weza keeps it alive. And there goes Jawara. He got fouled very hard. Now let's see if he can make the Bobcats pay for this. Mo shooting 53% from the line this year. And the first one rims out. And that looked good. I mean, they had nice trajectory on it as my high school coach would say coach Ernest Washington got to give it a chance but also you know sometimes as a, a basketball player you know you you have to just take it upon yourself and say man I need to score and whatever way it is I'm, I'm going to make these free throws you know and, and Jawara looked determined there makes a second that breaks a 636 scoreless run for Stetson. And Towns on the other end. And he's given Ohio a little spark off the bench here. That, that bench has been the difference for the Bobcats. You know, that's 12, probably what, 14 points off the bench. It's a 12 to 3 right now in bench points in favor of Ohio. 12 points, yeah, I mean, that, that's a difference. That's huge for a road game as well. You got to get the ball inside here because Izuma, he's going to foul. <laughs> Swenson all day and he doesn't even touch the rim. He misses it. I mean, he's left-handed, but we've seen him make right hand layup before. And a foul on the other end is Izuma has it knocked out of his hands. And just like that, you got a 10-point lead there by the Bobcats. And that's three fouls on Christian Jones with Izuma going to the line. And that's a good foul there. Izuma. I don't think he's attempted a free throw this year. Now this is his first collegiate free throws <laughs> right here for IJ Izuma. 6'8", 240-pound freshman, Raleigh, North Carolina, originally. That looked good to me. And he says, man, hey, I've been making free throws all my life. What's the difference? College free throw, high school free throw. Ohio threatening to pull away here. This is their largest lead of the game, and Izuma drains both. Very good form for that young man. I.J. Izuma, 13-8 last year. He was a 66% free throw shooter in high school. 
Looks like a number that could go up based on that form. Yeah. It's all about the attempts. Hatters have just eight points in the second half. Jawara fighting for it. He'll go back to the line. you got to recognize where you are on the floor and who is guarding you. I mean, Jawara could have just gone straight up and punched that there. But he's sandwiched between two guys. Not much he could do, but there's a foul there by Sam Towns. You look at Mohamedou Jawara's numbers, which are very down from a year ago. And well, he just matched his season high in points. He's got six. That tells you uh, how much he's struggling. His season high before the FIU game, I should say, when he had 12. Despite Coach Jones benching him to try to motivate him to play, you know, the Hatters are a better team with Jawara playing and, and playing effectively. He has to play well for this team to be successful, and especially so in the Atlantic Sun Conference. Here's the press off the made free throws. And you could turn it up a notch because you've seen the officials are not calling a lot of fouls. But it does create a number situation. Clayton misses the bunny. Rebound Towns blocked off the window by Jawara, but a foul on uh, Mo. I think it may have been an anticipatory call there by the officials. It, it looked bad, but <laughs> it looked like a good block. I think he called someone else with the foul, but I don't see a foul anywhere. No, that's clean. It's a clean block. That is a tough break for Jawara. That's his third foul. It's a 16 foul on I, the Hatters. I think you got to let him stay in. Eight minutes. We're under, yeah, under the 10 minutes. Doesn't look like he's coming out. Yeah. Towns, this is his first free throw attempts of the year. He misses the first. And makes the second. Five points off the bench for Sam Towns. And that's been the difference of the basketball game. They're shooting nine for ten. The Hatters only three for four. Rob Perry back in. Corner two is good. And Rob wants to come alive in this second half. The Hatters are going to need everything from him and more. Tommy Schmock's going to run some clock for Ohio. Hatters back within single digits. Dropped by Azuma. Turnovers, what they needed. Good defense by the Hatters. It's just sloppy play by the Bobcats. Perry driving hard. Gets it in. Just forced it up and through. It's a seven-point game. And Coach Bowles is looking down his bench. He says, let me bring Sears back in. My floor general. Yeah, all the starters are getting ready to check back in for Ohio. Sears, Roderick, Carter. Smith gets the rebound. One and done there for Ohio. Swenson ahead. Not a good pass. Picked off by Schmack. Tommy Schmack bowls over Swenson. Offensive foul. Good position defense and Swenson. And he knows it. Trying to make a tone for that bad pass. Coming up with a big defensive stop there for the Hatters. Hatters starting to get some momentum behind him. Rob Perry. Back-to-back -back buckets. Hatter ball down. Five non-conference games left. Four of them are at home. Including the College of Charleston. Their lone D1 appoint, uh, appointment coming in on Thursday night. A trip down to Coral Gables on the docket as well just before Christmas. Seven-point game here. Seven and a half minutes to go. Evan Weston, Greg Turner with you. Been a hard-fought game. Sets him down by as much as 12. They have fought back to seven. Have the ball here. Rob Perry, last two buckets for the Hatters. Trying to make it three. He's got it. He's Rob good. Perry starting to feel it. Uh, super Rob Perry. He can get you points like bananas in bunches. So he's come out. He's sat on the bench for a while and observed what was going on. Knows what his team's, what they need. They need some scoring. That's 12, what he does. 12 points for Perry. Six of seven inside the arc today for Rob. Now Carter. Backing down Jawara. Carter with a right. Too short. He's had the opportunity to go to work inside, but he's just has not been able to get the points to go down point blank range. Perry again. Finally misses. Bit of a heat check there from Rob. And then a blocking foul by Swenson. It'll be one and one free throws for Carter. 
Second foul on Stefan Swenson. Jason Carter, not a very good shooting free throw uh, uh, shooter, but the officials had to call that. That stopped a perhaps fast break. So Swenson did a pretty good job. And Carter, 12 out of 19 from the line this year. He misses the front end. Yeah, only shooting, what, about 50, yeah, 59%. So that did not, that foul did not hurt the Hatters, but now you have to capitalize on it on the offensive end. And you see the Bobcats still in that tough man-to-man -to -man defense. They've been in most of the game. They have stuck to Johnson like glue today. He's only got one free. Swenson out to Smith. He'll try it from long range. That didn't have much of a chance, but Perry gets the offensive rebound. Now Johnston too short. Smith, third chance. That's no good. And it'll stay with Stetson uh, again. A lot of contact. The officials are letting them play basketball this afternoon. And, and when that happens, you just go ahead and, hey, you, you take what the officials are giving. They're not calling you, so you go to the boards even harder. Rob Perry keeping it alive. Josh Smith keeping it alive. 13 offensive rebounds yes. for Stetson in yes. this game. That has kept them in the basketball game. Those extra possessions. Rob Perry has the shorter Sears on him. And Swenson's going to drive. Hits to Smith. Johnston has the big Carter in his face. Now Smith, no chance there. And it's down to Brown. So four chances to score. No points for Stetson on that trip down the floor. Now Vanderplas backing down Smith. Goes to his right, has to pass. Carter, one more to Roderick. Roderick is a little you, shy. You see the hesitation. <laughs> yeah, he has is. struggled this year and today included. It's almost a push off on Sears, but this is a pivotal possession here. Swenson got a piece of the basketball. Sears surrounded. Baseline J is good big for shot. Carter. What a bailout from Jason Carter. Yes, big shot by the veteran performer. We talked about these bookend forwards there for the Bobcats. Both of them over 1,100 points in their career, respective careers, as Vanderplas and, and Carter. Ten today for Carter to lead Ohio. It has not been pretty. They have not played with the fluidity and explosiveness that they've come to be known for, but trying to get the job done on the road. Jawara backing down Vanderplas. The hook. Unlucky not to get that one to go. Ohio with numbers. Josh Smith apparently had to, to rebound. Roderick, no good. Johnston now out on the open floor. Johnston, driving on Carter, couldn't get by him. Swenson puts it on the deck, kicks to Johnston. One more Perry, wide open, drills it! And we got an injury down on the other, other end of the floor. Yeah, Roderick is slow to get up. That's why Stetson had the numerical advantage. They're going to check on Roderick, and we'll take a timeout. 44-40 ball game after Rob Perry knocks down the three. Should be an exciting finish here in the land. to the action and a foul on Stefan Swenson as Ohio brings it up the floor that's the third on Swenson and it'll be a one and one for Mark Sears 44 40 Ohio Ben Roderick was down injured I think it may be maybe our that's the third on Swenson and it'll be a one and one for Mark Sears 44 40 Ohio Ben Roderick was down injured. I think it may be maybe a cramp, uh, perhaps. Yeah, he's not at the trainer's table. He's just getting a drink now and taking a seat. Tommy Schmack has come in for him. Sears, who was the 
Max, leading free throw shooter. Two out of two. And that's something you don't want to have happen when you're in a full court press. If the basketball gets ahead of your initial press, everyone needs to retreat and get back. But just a, a ticky tack foul, and, and it cost the Hatters two points. The Bobcats give them credit, taking advantage of it, going to the line early there in the bonus. Still just a two possession game. Swenson looking to create. Shoots instead. Counted and a foul. Uh, Stephon Swenson. Swenson. Swenson is looking at himself and like, it's about time I get a shot to go down. <laughs> His first points of the day, and they are big ones. Swenson will go to the line to make it a one possession game. When we come back, Stetson was down by 12 with nine minutes left. They are right back in this in the final few minutes. Had a 12-point lead with nine minutes left. It's now down to four, and Stefan Swenson about to take an and one free throw, try and make this a three-point ball game. Swenson, four out of six from the line this year. The foul was the first on Mark Spears, or Sears, excuse me, before the break. Swenson knocks it down. Yep, as you mentioned, 80% free throw shooter. He normally shoots the ball well from the line, and they had us go into their one, two, two, full court press. Let's see if they can force a turnover. It's probably nothing more than trying to slow the Bobcats down. Now they got 15 seconds left to do something offensively. Vanderplas backing down Panzo. Jamara to help. Vanderplas gets his own miss and puts it in. And it's been like that all afternoon. The officials letting him play inside. And Vanderplas, like he got fouled there, but. Had the presence of mind to miss the shot, but gather its own rebound and make it. They held him in check, just seven points for Vanderplas, and now an offensive foul. Yeah, I mean, Jawara looks like the foul was initially on the screen, but. That's his fourth yeah. foul. Yeah, that's a tough one. Again, that's on the guy that you're screening for, too. If he moves before you're set, and nine times out of ten, the official's going to call it on the screener. You have to receive that screen, set your man up, then use it. Sears looking for space. Schmack kick to Vanderplas. Still no shot. Now finally Brown is open. Misses the triple. Rebound Sears trying to go over Jawara. And Carter has it knocked out off of Carter last. It looks like we got an injured Swenson on that. That possession. He says he's hard, all right. He's walking a little gingerly. Yeah, going to try to tough it out there, but it looks like he kind of almost did a split as we take a look at it here. Yep. Ooh. Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, that's no fun. And I, I think I pulled a groin just looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, boy, these young people today, I mean, with the stretching and the mobility and everything that they do, I mean, 20, 30 years ago, that's an ACL injury. And now he's playing like it's... He's going to bring the ball up. Wow. And a foul. Ohio <laughs> is incensed. They wanted a travel, but he did look to the official, and you can verbally say timeout to the official. Yeah, they're going to timeout, not it. a foul. Yeah. Swenson was in big trouble there, trapped up against... The they, timeline. they wanted to travel because he slid his foot, but he verbally committed the timeout. Ohio at six and two. Their only two losses this year have been at SEC schools at number 13, Kentucky, and then an LSU team that has been one of the big surprises of the season so far, undefeated on the year. Yeah, the Bobcats struggled with that game. It took them almost 11 minutes before they got their first bucket. They ended up making it respectable at the end, but. Uh, the Hatters here are being a very formidable opponent for this good Bobcat team. Stetson just two and five, but they have fought hard. Perry, deep three, clanks off the side of the backboard. Not the possession he wanted, but he had to get the shot up. Shot clock going down. Good defense by the Bobcats. And now Sears can run some clock. Ohio's in the double bonus. 
And this is where they're going to run their offense with a lot of two-man game, a pick and roll. This is where Sears goes to work. Vander Plaas, four to shoot. Schmack from way out. Got it! Tommy Schmack! As he daps up Coach Foles running down the floor. A massive three for a guy who wouldn't have even been on the floor had Ben Roderick not been hurt. Schmack, the grad transfer with the, uh, the three and then a miss by Swenson in Ohio. Looks like they're going to be able to hang on here. And sometimes the fortune of your team just falls exactly the way it should. Wow. Roderick been struggling all game, all season outside. And then Schmack comes in, as you said, because he got injured and he knocks down a big shot. Played all four years of his undergrad at Findlay Division II school in Northwest Ohio. Averaged 14 a game last year. Gets a shot at D1. And now it's Sears who really puts the cherry on top for the Bobcats. Sears in double figures for the ninth straight game. We talked about Sears at the top of the telecast. This is the young man, 6'2". He's probably like 6'1", man, a 200-pounder. Strong. Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Long way away. Hargrave Military Academy. He has blossomed in his sophomore year. With Jason Preston going to the NBA, they have not lost a step with Sears as the lead guard. Had us here. You got to get shots up. You got to make shots. Perry gets a step. He'll score. And now Donnie Jones wants timeout. But Ohio opening it up at the end here. Schmack and Sears with the big buckets for the Bobcats. There's Rob Perry just going to work one-on-one. -on -one. 52 at Georgia Tech. And both teams are low. I mean, what does uh, Bobcats average? 70? 74 a game. 74. So yes. they're like, what, 20, <laughs> 21 points under. But it's been a very, as you said, an ugly basketball game. And, and the officials have done a good job. But it's – and but now we, we're going to have a, you know, a little foul there. And, and I know all, both benches are like, wow. You know, we've been getting hammered all game long, and now all of a sudden, with seconds left, Tiki Tech foul. But Sears is very good free throw shooter. Yeah, this is the guy they want on the line, Mark Sears. And he drains the first. Ohio looking to defend their MAC title. They were picked second in the conference, and I think they're a little bit better than their projection maybe with the breakout that Sears has had and they're going to get Dwight Wilson back at some point early in the league season they anticipate Wilson averaged 15 and 8 last year so they'll add him to their front court and Swenson just can't get a bucket to go he's been point blank range he was under the rest there but he's a guy that's going to have to make some shots for you especially when he takes it to the basket Ohio hangs on and gets a big road win. Their second away win of the year. They go to 7-2. and two, Knocking off the Stetson Hatters, who have now dropped four in a row. They'll get a quick chance to turn it around and rebound against Johnson on Monday night. For Greg Turner, our producer Jeff Taylor, broadcast technicians Robert Shaw and Jacob Gowan, our entire Stetson broadcast production crew. My name is Evan Weston saying so long from Deland, Florida. Our final score, Ohio 55, Stetson 45. Watch this entire game on replay as well as all the college basketball games on our family of ESPN networks. ESPN app, ESPN.com, the places to be. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Have a great weekend, everybody.